Ciao a tutti and welcome to this new episode of Dance for Two Insights. In this new episode, we will see the three different ways that you can use it to build a model with TensorFlow 2. Sequential API, Functional API, and Subclassing. I'm Vittorio, and welcome to XPM channel. Just to finish the Tupperware's notebook that you can find in the description below, where I collected all the code that I'm going to show you today. So let's start with the first way that you can use it to build a model with TensorFlow, and that's the sequential API. A sequential API is really straightforward, and it's um, by far the simplest way that you can use it to build a model with TensorFlow. It's simply a stack of layers placed on top of each other. So you create a sequential object, and then you can put practically all cars layers that you want. So let's build a ResNet. No, you can't. You can't because with sequential API, all transfers can only flow from one layer to another sequentially. And that's the name of sequential API. You can't build a ResNet, but you can build this beautiful model. Oh, look at it. So beautiful. This model is really too ubiquitous. Um, you can find it in a lot of uh, uh, representations. So I said, uh, why don't try to make it? So uh, as I said, the first thing that you have to do is to uh, create a sequential object. Here I'm using the full import path, but um, you can naturally do whatever you want. After instantiating a sequential object, we can use the add method to add all cares layers that we want. Uh, in this case, we have a multi-layer perceptor and so all fully connected layers. We can use this first line of code to add the input layer and the first hidden layer. Uh, we can also not specify the um, input shape, but if you already know the dimension, uh, do it. Then we can use for loops to add the similar layers. And finally, with this last line of code, I'm adding the output layer. After our model is defined, we can use the summary method to print the architecture of the network and check the number of variables. In this case, we have eight input uh, neurons, nine uh, neurons in the first hidden layer, and so eight times nine plus nine biases, and that's for all eight layers, 301. A model is also a very versatile object. Uh, I can uh, inspect the different layers with the attribute uh, layers. I can um, get them by index or by, by name. And I finally can set and get the variables with get weights and set weights. Okay, that was the sequential API. I think pretty simple, but also powerful. Um, naturally, uh, with Sequential API, you can already build a lot of different models, but you have also a lot of limitations. Instead, with a Functional API, you can practically build all TensorFlow model that you want. With a Functional API, we treat each layer as, uh, as a function, passing the tensors that you want to feed it with. Let us start building the so famous Inception block. Um, I know that you always wanted to build an inception block. To build the block, the first thing that I have to do is to create a, a simple Python function with the first tensor and um, all attributes that I want to, to put. Um, as I said, we are treating the Keras layers as function. So I use the first set of parentheses to instantiate the object, and then the second set of parentheses to feed the tensor um, that, I, that I want to go through. In this case, I have the input tensor that feeds at the same time for uh, different uh, branches. So input previous layer goes here, 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 and uh, here. Uh, then I can collect the output of each curse layer and again feed whatever uh, other layer that I want in whatever order. Uh, so for example, in this case, that should be this um, second branch. I take this output and I feed another convolutional um, layer with a 3x3 free free kernel. Uh, finally, I can collect all outputs and feed this last uh, 
um, con concatenation layer to get uh, the output. Now with this block and, and this compositionality, I think it's the most beautiful and amazing thing of uh, Function API, you can build a model. <laughs> I know it's a pointless and shitty model, but at least you can see how with Function API, you can make uh, tensors flow all over you want. We have the input tensor that goes until the end of the model, uh, then at the same input uh, feeds uh, an inception block, then at the output tensor of the final inception block splits in two, one uh, uh, feeds a three by three convolution and the other one uh, a one by one convolution, and finally I collect all tensors uh, to get uh, the final output. Uh, let's build a uh, uh, Python function. We can naturally also not build a Python function, but I think it's more compact. Uh, the first thing we have to add is uh, this special keras layer, an input uh, layer, where we specify the input shape. We can put none in the case we, we don't know the dimension. For example, in this case, uh, this uh, Beautiful network is a fully convolutional network, so the, the first two dimensions can be whatever whatever we want. Then I copy the output of this layer in this variable. We uh, iterate over several inception block n, and it's a variable of this, uh, this function. Then, uh, as I said, we split uh, the output uh, of the inception block in two. We feed two convolutional layers, and finally, I concatenate uh, all. The last thing that I have to do is to create a model object at this time and define the input and the output of the model. And if I want um, um, a name. And that's it, really a piece of cake. Then I can call this function, build the model, and again use the summary method to, to print the architecture of the network. And as you can see, we have a much, much bigger model. And also the number of variables naturally is, uh, is higher. Here I'm creating another function for the version tool of my, my model. I have to specify another uh, input uh, layer for my second uh, second tensor and for the output and not even that. Simply when I'm instantiating the model object I have to pass a list uh, of inputs and uh, a list of outputs. Um, then I can call uh, the, the new function and print uh, the summary of, uh, of it. Instead finally, what about combining more models? Uh, nothing more simple. I can really do all the surgery that I want. I simply have to take a previously instantiated object and then treat it like a function, functional API. And that's it again. Uh, I create a Python function to be more compact. I feed, uh, for example, model uh, this, this model with uh, a tensor that comes from the input layer. I instantiate a model that uh, takes input and outputs. I call uh, this, uh, this beautiful function. I can also call the summary to print the architecture. And uh, done. Whew. Sequential API and Functional API. Why not subclassing? Yeah, why not? Here I collected some um, advantages and disadvantages of using subclassing API. For example, you can build dynamic models and do practically whatever you want, uh, and it's more imperative programming style. But also you have some disadvantages. For example, it's not simple anymore to save a model, it's not simple to inspect it, and everything is more prone to errors. Anyway, let's start building a first example. Our beautiful network of the beginning. Uh, with subclassing, we are not dealing anymore with functions, but as the name suggests, with classes. We have to create two main methods. Uh, in the first one, we define only the layers that we are gonna use, not the topology, not how these layers are connected. 
instead in the call function and here practically really we can do whatever we want we can do if loops uh, and we instead specify the architecture of the network then i can uh, call my class and uh, i have my my model as i said it's not easy to inspect it for example we can't inspect the shape but the model behaves like all the others i leave to you also a second less dumb example and finally a resonant you can build a resonant also with a function api but um, i think it's interesting to see an example with a subclassing okay thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe for more videos and see you for next episode of SBN channel.